In the last video, we explored how the tourist narrative paints King Ludwig II as a madman who squandered wealth on extravagant, unneeded castles. Tourists in Germany are fed this story through books, TV documentaries, and endless tours that label Ludwig as a reckless spender. But this story, to me, doesn't hold up to scrutiny. Ernstium Sea Palace was supposedly started by Ludwig in 1878 on an island in Chiemsee Lake. The official narrative claims Ludwig's obsession with castles, including Herenchium Sea, drained Bavaria's treasury, ultimately leading to his suicide by drowning in 1886. However, recent findings challenge this. Ludwig wasn't the poor king portrayed. He was one of Europe's wealthiest at the time. And as for his supposed suicide, witnesses claim he died from gunshots, a fact often glossed over by mainstream accounts. Then, there's Ludwig's architect, George von Dahlmann. Records credit him with designing and completing Herenchium C, but some peculiarities cast doubt on his role. Photographs and architectural inconsistencies suggest that Dahlmann may not have been responsible for creating the palace from scratch. In fact, the palace looks far too weathered in construction photos to have been newly built in the 1880s, indicating it could be much older. This isn't the only architectural mystery around Herenchium C. Similarities abound between Herenchium C and other Bavarian buildings, including nearby castles and gardens designed in the 1600s and 1700s. Decorative gardens, fountains, and structural layouts mirror the style supposedly invented for Herenchium C, hinting that Ludwig's palace might actually be a reimagined or refurbished historical site. Anyway, this is part two of the series. If you feel like you've missed anything, check out the previous video. The link is in the description. I recommend watching it to get the full picture. So, without further ado, fasten your pants, and let's get started. This is a 1563 map of Chiemsee. Close up, we see the abbey in the north and a town called Holzkirchen in the south, which is no longer there today. No sign of the palace at the center of the island, though. Does this debunk my theory? Watch the series to the end, then decide. The abbey seems much larger. A wild idea came to mind. Was the new palace relocated from the north to the center of the island? This 1648 map refers to the island as Herenward, the older name for the castle. Here's proof that the castle used to be referred to by that name. Here it's Herenworth, a postcard from 1886. This 1802 map also shows nothing. Well, not nothing. It shows four smaller houses where we today find the castle. I'm guessing they're coal mining huts because the place is called Coal Town, Kolstad. For comparison, is it possible that the castle was buried below earth, that Ludwig knew where it was, and bought the place before anyone else discovered it? I ask because this tourist map refers to an ancient buried Celtic ring wall. Pay attention to item 23. There are hidden, yet undiscovered structures to be found on the island. The Celtic wall is mostly below earth or overgrown by trees. Ground penetrating radar has discovered several large artificial structures below the ground beside the castle. I see above ground and below ground walkways leading from the castle to the Celtic structure. Some of the lines you see on the radar image are above earth but most aren't. For comparison, maybe those coal miners were mining for something other than coal. I spent half an hour looking for the radar images that include the wider island, but found only this cutout. The palace is on a line that cuts through the entire island. Is there a purpose to this? There are people who say it's a ley line that forms a straight path touching other ancient Celtic centers called Roseninsel or Rose Island. Schatzburg or Treasure Mountain, and Otterburn. It is said that these Celts built their sacred sites atop these lines for energy reasons. This, for instance, is Rose Island. I'm told a ley line connects Herenchium Sea and the circles you see here. I have no way of verifying. And honestly, the four ancient Celtic sites don't look like a perfectly straight line to me. Almost straight, but not perfectly so maybe due to geological changes. A few samples of the interior. 
I did not learn who the incredibly ambitious people were who made the statues, etchings, paintings, chandeliers, gold, etc. Nor were the marble, stone, glass, and gold was shipped from, or how they were transported to the small island. The German Wikipedia tells me this. They say the interior was equipped by George Dahlmann, the same man who designed, constructed, and photographed the castle. Julius Hoffmann and Franz Paul Stahlberger also contributed to the interior. And then there were a couple of people who did the paintings. I looked up the source book on which this info is based and found the exactly same info. These people created the interior, but not much more. Such a lack of detail for such a unique and ambitious project. The text also says that some of the art is dedicated to the French Sun King, as well as themes from Roman and Greek mythology. In other words, nothing to do with Bavarian history. If you were Ludwig, the King of Bavaria, wouldn't you build something dedicated to your own country? Is it a coincidence that the palace and area resemble a human being from the air? The waterways are the eyes, mouth, and breasts, the building itself the legs. Construction is said to have started on May 21st of 1878. I decided to have a look at the local newspaper archives of the time. Surely they'd report on such a fantastic undertaking. I read the newspaper Wendell Stein from May 21st of 1878. It was one of the top local newspapers distributed in southern Bavaria. The newspaper lists a number of local events in the area, including the very nearby town of Rosenheim, but absolutely no mention is made of Chiemsee. I read the newspaper Rosenheimer Anziger from the same day. I learned that the fire department conducted exercises on that day, but not that the biggest construction project the region has ever seen just began. Why am I not surprised? This is so strange. Imagine the stir and commotion such a project must have caused. The people living in the area were, and still are humble and simple. They're mostly farmers. They follow the Catholic faith. And in comes the king himself erecting a castle dedicated to the Sun King, digging a straight line through an entire island, interrupted only by the Apollo Basin, erecting a gigantic structure. Wouldn't locals have noticed? Where are the records of that? Where are reports of locals? Where are the news reports? How many were employed? Where are your grandmothers and grandfathers who talked about how their parents were involved in the project? Frustrated at finding no reports, I did a keyword search on Heron GMC. I found it only started appearing on a regular basis from 1886 forward, once Ludwig was dead and the place opened to the public. This can only mean one of two things. Construction was kept secret until then, or it wasn't built when they said it was. I rule out the first explanation. Such a massive undertaking can't be kept secret. I support the second explanation. The local newspapers that I viewed make no mention of a large construction between 1878 and 1885. They should have retroactively forged newspapers to support their narrative. As elsewhere, the usurpers dug out and repurposed whatever was left after the great upheaval and reset of 1776 to 1840. I found no photos of the Heron Insel, the island on which the palace rests, predating the 1880s. I found a couple of photos of the Frauen Insel, the adjacent ladies' island such as this one from 1860. Riddle me this, dear fact checkers. With such a breathtaking scenery, Cheem C should be one of the most photographed places in the world. And there are photographs, hundreds, but not of its main island. Instead, I found drawings. This one is hard to explain. They must have been deliberately removed. But wait, things get even weirder. Another problem, if you will, is the existence of a second structure to the left side of the main building. A structure just as big that has vanished today. Here, for instance. And here. And here, on this 1880 photo, far left. On my guided tour of the castle, a second building was never mentioned, to my recollection. Where did it disappear to? Why was it torn down? This is a 1900 postcard. This is a photo from 1900. I don't know where that second building disappeared to. I didn't know it was built in the first place until I began this video. Even weirder, there are photos from the late 1800s with this building absent. How and why? To put this into context, 
I visited the place four times, probably more than most other tourists. I should have known that a second building, almost as big as the main building, existed. But I didn't. Now I do. Why would tour guides omit such a fact? Why did I not see the second building on any of the photos and brochures at the souvenir shops and museum? Maybe there's a rational explanation for this, but if so, I haven't found it. If you guys find this video interesting, I'll make a part three.